Explore needs explorers, exoplanet orbit researchers, which are your good selves. Without you, the project won't, won't get off the ground. So what have we got here? From the Earth to the Moon and onward to the stars, you will be following the footsteps of Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton, and Rodney tells me he lived in his hut for a, for a while. And of course, the Apollo astronauts, um, Armstrong, Aldrin, and uh, Collins, and out there with, with the um, Voyager 1, somewhere beyond the edge of the solar system by now. Okay, to, to boldly go, but to boldly go, definitely to boldly go, as we will be stretching the abilities of amateur astronomers. Why not? Um, some possible targets, uh, secondary transits we talked about, additional planets, um, and maybe exocomets or even exomoons. Whoops, too fast there. Um, if you are new to exoplanet and exoplanet observations, I suggest you start route one, as we talked about earlier, as Anastasia talked about and Martin has, has mentioned hops. Become familiar with transits via exoclock spies, which will teach you all you need to know about observing transits and the exoclock project to put that into practice. And the more experience among you may wish to dive straight in to the potential pilot projects, Route 2, which I'll show some examples of on the following slides. Uh, as we've mentioned, HOP software is that used to generate light curves for input to exoclock, and Astro Image J can also be used to analyze images, as demonstrated by, by Richard Lee. The challenge for you is to help determine which of the projects is within the capabilities of amateur astronomers using their own or larger robotic remote and robotic and or remote telescopes. For those of a more mathematical bent, there are databases to be mined, as will be mentioned later. Uh, you'll see on some of the slides extras. Um, that's information that's on additional slides, um, mostly links, which I won't show here, but this will all go up on the Exoplanet website sooner or later, so you have the information there. Summary of potential pilot projects. Some are observational, some are data mining, some are both. Uh, so we've got six I want to dash through here. The objective of this pilot is to detect secondary transit, also known as eclipses of known exoplanets. Uh, that occurs, as we mentioned earlier, when the planet passes behind, behind the star. As these usually occur, usually occur, Rodney corrected me on this, midway between primary transits, their timing could be calculated using, for example, the ExoWorld Spires Transit Scheduler. Mind you, they are much fainter than the main transits, so it's probably a good idea to pick transits with, a, with quite a large depth. Okay, monotransits and duotransits. Monotransits and duotransits are so named because only one or two transits of a particular exoplanet transit, which we all know, uh, has been observed by space telescope or ground-based telescopes. But confirmation of the existence of a planet requires observation of three transits. So there's work for us there. As mentioned earlier, TTVs and TDVs, uh, the objective of this are to discover additional exoplanets in known systems by searching for transit timing and duration variations in transit light curves. Um, and also to discover examples of orbital decay, which indicate the planet is migrating inwards towards its host star. So variations don't always indicate there's another planet in the system. It might just be that the planet we're observing is migrating inwards due to some friction with the um, protoplanetary disk, for example. The objective of this project is to make a, is to image a complete orbit of an exoplanet to determine the shape of its phase curve. A project which uh, lends itself to group activity, whereby the observations can be coordinated and amalgamated. As we mentioned earlier, the measured brightness varies depending on the relative positions of the planet and the host star. Maximum brightness is at times when a planet is about to move behind and emerge from the host star and its day side, I should say, as we are seeing both the light from the star and reflected light from the planet, equivalent to full moons. That's 
when it's just going behind or when it's just emerging, that's when you get the brightest, brightest part of the curve. PPP5, the objective of this project is the detection of exomoons by observing variations in the transit light curve as shown in this diagram, uh, for example. The, these last two projects are definitely pushing the envelope, but someone out there may feel up to the challenge. You may just wish to review all the relevant literature and light curves and maybe write an article for us telling us, yes, it's possible or, or no, it isn't possible. Or yes, there are some examples which might be worth following up. And PPP6, uh, similarly a very difficult project, but again, to examine light curves to see if the presence of an exocomet is indicated. Some of the objects which might turn up in your, your images also, we have eclipse and binaries, we have asteroids, which usually appear as a short streak due to their motion, comets, uh, supernova and nova, uh, tumbling satellites, and even launches of telescopes such as JWST. So it's always worthwhile examining your images very carefully to see what else might be in there. Until the time comes when we can actually build a starship, as shown here, and visit exoplanets, then we will have to rely on astronomers, professional amateurs, to tease out their secrets. We've outlined some of the things we can do, uh, possibly do, so what next? Uh, if you are interested in coordinating or participating in one of the projects, please do, please do let us know. Um, a very important part of all this is to report to us whatever it is you find or conclude. And we may well have a follow-up meeting to review progress um, later on. I've been monitoring the numbers of attendees during the day, and it seems that not too many of you have slipped away, but if you have, we, we know where you live. So carpe diem, seize the day. And finally, um, we'll put as much of this information, we'll put this information and links to the, uh, YouTube, BA YouTube um, site where this uh, will be shown on the website. And what we plan to do is to send out a, a monthly email to Exoplanet Division members, uh, which will include highlights, project progress, and links to relevant material. Um, so if you're not on the Exoplanet mailing list and you want to be included, you will need, uh, because of privacy rules and all that sort of thing, send me an email giving your permission for me to put you on the mailing list. And as I said at the end, yeah, if things go well, then we'll hold a follow-up meeting to, to discuss uh, progress. So I guess, guess that's it. Um, thank you to the speakers. Um, thank you for all attending.